Hello everyone, my name is Atish and I am back with a new learning video on rules for complementary function. Complementary function is very important as far as the solution of higher order linear differential equation with constant coefficients are concerned. So let us see what is higher order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. As you can see, this is the general form of higher order linear differential equation with constant coefficient. In this, the notation, these are the notations. So D stands for ddx, that is derivative with respect to x. D2 stands for d2 by dx square, that is double derivative with respect to x. So using these notation in equation 1, equation 1 will imply this. Now as you can see, y is common in all the terms. So I am taking y common and we left with this operating on y equal to x. We will write this bracketed quantity as f of d. f of d is a polynomial in d of degree n. And say this is equation number 2. Now depending on the value of x, we have two different types of higher order linear differential equation. So if this x is equal to 0, then equation 2 is called homogeneous differential equation and its complete solution is y is equal to complementary function. If x is not equal to 0, then equation 2 is called non-homogeneous differential equation and its complete solution is y equal to cf plus pi. Here this pi means particular integral and we will see the rules to find out particular integral in the next video. So, as you can see whether the differential equation is homogeneous or non-homogeneous, we have to write cf that is complementary function. Now I would like to tell you the method of finding complementary function. You just have to follow the steps and the steps are write the given differential equation of the form f of dy equal to 0. That's step 1. Put d is equal to m in equation 1 to get f of m equal to 0. That's step 2. And this f of m is equal to 0 is known as auxiliary equation of equation 1. Now, once you get the auxiliary equation, we just solve. The auxiliary equation may be quadratic, may be cubic, may be of degree 4. So, solve this auxiliary equation. And suppose this auxiliary equation is a quadratic one. So, you will get how many roots? Two roots, say m1 and m2. Now, depending on the nature of the roots, write down the complementary function. As you can see, the rules for complementary function depends on the nature of root. So once you solve the quadratic equation, you will get roots. Now there are two possibilities. The roots may be real, may be complex. So let us see if the roots are real. Now if the roots are real, again there are two conditions. Roots are real and unequal. Roots are real and equal. If the roots are real and unequal, you write complementary function as c1 e to the power m1x plus c2 e to the power m2x. Now, if the roots are real and equal, say m1 equal to m2, say m, so cf would be c1 e to the power mx plus c2 e to the power mx. Just because the root is repeating, I have to multiply the second term by x. Suppose we have three roots and all the three roots are repeating. So what would be your CF? C1 e to the power mx plus x into C2 e to the power mx plus x square into C3 e to the power mx. Now if the roots are complex, that is of the form m is equal to a plus minus ib, CF is equal to e to the power ax into C1 cos bx plus c2 sine bx. 
where all these c1 and c2 are the arbitrary constants. Now, dear students, I would like to make one remark here. Some students get confused when they are getting uh, surge roots like 2 plus root 3, 2 minus root 3. So, they are uh, confused with the roots a plus ib. So, the basic thing is to understand whether the root is complex or real. If the roots having iota means that's root is complex that is very basic thing but few students get uh, confused with this that is why i'm making a remark here so let us take some examples to work out these rules so here we have example number one d2y by dx square minus dy by dx minus 2y equal to zero now method says write down the given equation convert it in terms of d so we have this now once you get the equation in terms of d write this auxiliary equation now see the auxiliary equation we have quadratic so how many roots will be getting two so when you solve this quadratic equation by on your own or with the help of calculator you will get the roots two minus one order is not important here you can write minus one two that is also correct so, as the roots are real and unequal, so this falls under rule number 1. So, rule number 1 says Cf is equal to C1 e to the power M1. M1 means 2x plus C2 e to the power M2 that is minus 1x. Now, all these examples that we are working in this learning video are having equal to 0 on the right hand side. So, here the required solution or the complete required solution will be y equal to cf only okay so this is the complete solution of the given differential equation where c1 c2 are arbitrary constants one more example so this is the ready-made example which is already in terms of d so you can start with a given thing, write its auxiliary equation. Now see the auxiliary equation. This auxiliary equation is cubic one. So how many roots? Three roots, very good. So these are the three roots. Again, order is not important. Now, as you can see, the roots are real and real and unequal, correct? So again, this comes under rule number one. So CF is C1e to the power zero x plus c2 e to the power minus 3x plus c3 e to the power 4x. Again, right hand side is 0. So, complete solution would be y equal to cf. So, y equal to cf. Here should be, it should be c3. Huh? So, where c1, c2 and c3 are arbitrary constant. I am taking one more examples to avoid confusion. If any. So, this is the next example which is given in terms of d dx. So, convert this example in terms of d, write down its auxiliary equation. Now, when you solve this auxiliary equation, again, how many roots will be getting? Three. So, the three roots are like this. Minus one, two i and minus two i. So, iota is there. So, these are complex roots. But this is not complex roots. So, it's a combination of real and complex. So, for minus 1, we'll write CFS C1 e to the power minus 1x. And for this plus minus 2i, we write complementary function as e to the power 0x into C2 cos 2x plus C3 sin 2x because a is 0 and b is 2. Again, right hand side is 0. So, the required complete solution is y equal to CF. Okay, where C1, C2, C3 are arbitrary constants. If you have any queries related to this topic, you can write on comment section. I will resolve your doubts at the earliest. Thank you for watching this video. God bless you all.